Hey gents, I hear there's sponsored videos out there where the video sponsor is the only recommended brand. That's weird. I do hope that we leave the era of sponsorship equals bad because that's no way for channels to thrive on YouTube. However, uh, you know, the tip of the spear movement watches, you know, I think that kind of stuff will go away. But sponsorships are not bad. There's a good way and a bad way to do them. That being said, I didn't agree with some of the things that were said in that video. And as a person that owns literally all of these shoes and wears them all the time and did a video where I talked about 20 plus brands in this minimalist sneaker category, I think I had a few things to say. So number one, I have a couple of things first. Number one, I've done this video. I did 20 plus brands and I stick by the things that I found in that video but I did ask for brands that I missed in that video and there was a really big one. Two of them were Kent Wang and Svensson. So I do wanna talk about those today in the context of all these brands and do a little bit of defending around my thoughts and what I found by wearing all these shoes for more than two years. Number two, common projects. I wanna put this out there because I know that people are gonna say you can buy common projects for less than $300 on sale. However, if common projects drop their price to $250, they would eliminate a complete category of sneakers that are out there. When brands talk about cutting out the middleman, they're talking about common projects. Common projects took the stance to the silhouette, made it with premium quality materials. They are a luxury sneaker brand, just like they're, you know, they're trying to build a brand like you say Laurent and Gucci, but they charge their retail price is $410. In retail, 70% of products are sold at full price. The rest of the products are the ones that are out there for you know 250 to 300, and those secondhand ones were bought at full price. So common projects, yes, you can get them for less. Their listed price is 410, but they don't sell direct to consumer, which is why you see the markup because they're sold through Farfetch or through Neiman Marcus or XYZ luxury space. So that is why common projects are more expensive, and they are the reason there's this entire subclass of sneaker brands that make common projects quality at $250, which is the Koyo shoes right here. Number three, this video has no sponsorships. I have no relationship with any of the brands other than some affiliates to give you my honest opinion on all this stuff, recommend the best things because that's the goal of this channel here. The grades I purchased myself two years ago and unboxed them, you can watch that video. The Koyo's Ace Marks back at Simonon were sent to me. All the other shoes that you saw in that 20 plus brand roundup, including the Kent Wang today and the Svensson stuff, were all purchased by me. That's and regardless of an issue is sent to me or whatever, I can say whatever I want, which is what I love about this channel and the reason that I continue to make videos for you guys. Number four, the greats versus Stan Smiths. I think it is an insult to consider a $80 Stan Smith shoe to be anywhere as good as the greats. The greats has a margam sole, full grain upper, fully lined interior. It is much more comfortable and much more durable as is proof by my two plus year old shoes here, which look fantastic. And I do not agree with that assessment. I think the Stan Smiths and the Kurt New Republics, they belong in their category, which is a low cost, nicely made shoe. However, the leather on the greats is far superior than a Stan Smith's, the Margam sole considerably better. So at $180, I still believe that the greats are some of the best value shoes that are out there in the minimal sneaker category if you're looking for that common projects alternative. Number five, before we get into the rest of this, Koyo versus greats. I will tell you exactly why there is a $70 price difference in the Koyos versus the greats. The Margam soles are identical. They're both made in Italy. However, Koyo uses a very rich, supple calfskin leather, which ages beautifully. It is very soft, very comfortable, whereas the Greats uses a full grain leather, which is not quite as soft, but they both have the same padded soles here. They have the same Margam insoles. They have completely leather lined interiors. Greats is slightly bulkier, but actually the weight is not much different between the two. And so that's why you see the price increase over Koyo. So if you value the calfskin leather that is used on here and you like the suede accent on the Koyos, go with the Koyos. They're a, I still believe this is an incredible value shoe. And the same thing with the greats. If you don't care about the calfskin or you're looking to save that extra few extra dollars, if you like the perforated dots on the toe, which reminds you of an Air Force One, then greats are an incredible shoe as well. And both are excellent values in the world of common projects, even because you know, some of these sneakers are more minimalist than common projects now, and we'll talk about those next. So let's get into the rest of the shoes, including my Kent Wangs, Beckett Simonons, M Gemis, and everything in between. So as I said in my 20 sneaker roundup, I think that the greats are the tipping point when you get into common projects quality 
at lower prices. That is $179, and that is proof by these Svensson shoes right here. So I've had these for a few weeks. I have been wearing them around to make sure uh, I am very familiar with them and comfortable with them. And these were $170 shipped. There was a $29 flat rate shipping on these. Svensson is said to be made in the same factories common projects. They have pretty nice leathers. They have the Margum sole. They don't specify that it's full grain leather, which it seems like it's pretty close, but they have an extremely minimalist design and sleek aesthetic. I do like these. I think these are a worthy alternative to grades at the same price. However, the list price of these was marked off at 3,200 kroner, which is $350. If these are marked at $350, I believe they are too much and you need to go with I think Koyo would be a great alternative at that point because it's $248. Uh, but the Svensson shoes are very nice. Are they a common projects alternative? Absolutely. Do they have the similar build quality and everything else as common projects? Yes. $170 is a great price for these. They'd be the best deal in sneakers if I could actually get them for $140. And if you're in Europe, maybe you can. And so Svensson, great stuff. Kent Wang, also highly recommended and requested from my other video. And these ones come in as a slight disappointment. These cost me $145 shipped. There was a $17 shipping and handling fee within there. It was interesting that I could have paid less, $5 less if I didn't get a shoebox. That was odd. Uh, but I don't, these, these soles are unspecified, so I can't, they're not Margum soles, otherwise they have the logo right here. And the leather is subpar from what I, I would expect at this $150 price point. You know, you get a little bit more and you get into the grates, you get a little bit more, you go into the Svensson, and I don't think that these would hold up nearly as well over time, which is what I really push for. So not only are the leather uppers slightly disappointing, you can you just kind of see there's like this bubbly, it's just, it feels cheap. It feels like the New Republics, which are less than $100. And then the interior as well is a little more rigid. It's not quite as softly padded. And that's one of the things that I really like about the grates is how, how rich and supple the leather lining is on those shoes. And so the Kent Wangs are pretty good. I'll also put a picture here I found on a blog of one of these pairs of shoes that was a year old. They're extremely prone to creases and wrinkles. So the Kent Wangs, I think, are a good shoe if you can get these for 100 bucks if they're on sale or something. Uh, but you're starting to get into the price points where you're getting much better leathers for you know, 10 or $20 more. Also, if you saw my Koyo unboxing, I got, also got these suede ones, and I think I wear these more than the white ones. Do not sleep on these suede, all suede shoes. Love them. And then the other brands that get a lot of requests, I have the new Ace Marks sneakers right here, and I have the Beckett Simonon Reed sneakers. The Beckett Simonon Reed sneakers come in at 149. You can get them a little bit discounted if you find the code. The, again, these though are one of the brands that ship in like three months. They have to order them ahead of time. They come in three months. They do have extremely minimalist aesthetic, which is very nice. However, the leather is pretty good on here. I do like the laces. That's something that's really undersung about the Svensson, the Kent Wang, is this laces are just okay. The Koya laces are some of the best sneaker laces out there. I really like the Koya laces. But the Beckett Simonon, I find the soles to be extremely hard and the break-in period is much longer than anything else, any of these other sneakers that are out here. So if you can get these for 120, I think they're a great alternative. Uh, they do use a proprietary sole, but it's not Margum. But so far, the wear and tear has been great on these. And then Ace Marks comes right in at $250 where Koyo sits. I think if you're looking between Ace Marks, Koyo, and M Gemi, I think these are excellent shoes. They definitely fit that $250 price point. These are the newest ones in the studio. I'll definitely wear these more. I do like the all black colorway on here because I have the greats in black upper, white lower, and so that's just a unique look on here. But the Ace Mark shoes so far, fantastic. And uh, you know, I, I've had a lot of requests for these ones, so I wanna make sure I, I at least touched on these. I do wanna leave you with M Gemi. They got a lot of love in the comments on that last video. These do have, again, one of the most minimalist aesthetics of all these sneakers, no branding, no logos, even on the tongue, very soft padded tongue, Margum sole, full leather upper. But they also offer a colorway, this, this buffalo leather hand patinaed model, which is uh, one of the most gorgeous sneakers that I've seen out there. And so M Gemi definitely makes excellent shoes. And part of what I really like about my channel is not only do I have this data, I'm a data point of one on all these sneakers, but because I get excellent comments from you and direct messages and messages everywhere else, uh, I have the, the collective experience of a lot of guys wearing these shoes. And M Gemi gets a lot of love, so don't miss out on these. And then I'll also say that the what I recommended in that 20 brand sneaker roundup were the crown shoes, still one of the most comfortable shoes out there, handmade in England, and definitely check those out. I just did a crepe sole 
chuck a boot that uh, is whole chrome XL Horween leather. Absolutely incredible shoe, and that's the one that I've been spending the most time on recently. And so, to really sum this all up, $179 for the Greats Royale is one of the best deals in sneakers. If you're looking for a minimalist shoe that has high quality, well made materials, Koyo at $80 extra dollars warrants the upgraded price based on the superior materials from the cask and leather to the suede accents, and then also made in Italy, Margam Soul, high quality stuff. But the common projects, if the brand would, would reduce the price, they would eliminate this entire category of sneakers. So I don't want them to do that because we are so lucky to have brands like M Gemini and Koyo and Greats and Sventon, all of these brands that have popped up to fill the gap between the low cost Stan Smiths, which are the venerable classic and created the silhouette, and then the Common Projects way up here. So if you want Common Projects quality at lower prices, all of these brands are great. That's what I will leave you at. So you have it, gents. I hope this video helps. I hope you get the best shoe that you can afford. And as, as always, if you have any questions, I'll be down in the comments. You can also reach out at the underscore Cavalier on Twitter and Instagram. If you wanna know how to make these shoes last as long as possible, I'll link to a sneaker care video that I did recently so you can maximize the life of the shoes you are investing in. Until next time, gents, this is the Cavalier. <music>